I'd like maybe to discuss uh, in this uh, uh, round with the panelists, and maybe also with a question from the audience, about maybe the indications for metabolic surgery. Maybe Professor Dicker has shown very clear and with a lot of power uh, what uh, for diabetes patient, we have a strong instrument now to change the outcome of this patient in a long-term experience. Maybe we should show the patients of the long-term data uh, from the SLS study now with 20 years. And uh, we know that this surgery works. This is the same like physics, not in this way, but physics works also if you don't understand why. It's the same is with the metabolic surgery. And maybe the question which we should also talk about BMI, maybe it's time to stop about uh, indication dependent from BMI because we know if you do the surgery in the early stages, we have a better outcome. Maybe this is a discussion, also we have to talk with our diabetologist, and maybe we start with the panelists' the opinion, maybe and also the audience can uh, uh, give your opinion here in this discussion. Maybe you should start. Uh, I didn't uh, hear a question exactly about the diabetes. Maybe if you have a diabetic patient, a type, type 2 diabetes, it's just detected. He knows now, independent from, from the age of the patient, you should offer now, if you have such a long-term experience, uh, also discuss we have the option with metabolic surgery because in the long-term outcome, you see after the difference of 10, 11 years, you show the differences between the medical treatment and the surgery yeah. treatment. Uh, I think that every patient with a diabetes mellitus, which is obese, even if the BMI is 30 or more, I, think I, I can offer for him to do a metabolic surgery, uh, especially malabsorptive surgery, because I think that is the effect on the diabetes for remission, or uh, it's, it's, uh, high, it's higher than the uh, medication or medical uh, um, um, treatment for the diabetes. Even if it's a pre-diabetes without any medications, I. I, yeah, I offer for him a um, metabolic uh, uh, surgery. Yes, I, I, uh, I agree with my colleague. I, I don't think it's wise to wait until uh, diabetes become uh, um, propagated and uh, has uh, uh, um, progressed and uh, target uh, organs uh, failures. Uh, so I also tend to recommend metabolic surgery. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't matter which one, but as long as you do insist of uh, going in this process. So somebody so that's a situation where a patient is coming to you, has a BMI of 29, and he has uh, information that he's diabetic and should have a medical treatment maybe since uh, four weeks or two months. You, would, would you reject the patient, say, come back in one year, or you will listen to him, and uh, if he's willing to have the surgery, you will do it? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot offer him the surgery at this point. I will tell him that he should have, uh, uh, an, uh, he should watch his weight, and he should go to a, um, and uh, do his family practitioner to watch his, uh, his diabetes not progressing. If it will, then I will suggest that you will come back. Yuri, how you would do it in Russia? So, I, I would like to add a couple of words um, ab about uh, classification um, and prognosis of uh, surgical treatment for diabetes. It is important not only uh, degree of weight, but uh, the degree of uh, b b beta cells preservation because uh, it, uh, it depends on the outcome of uh, surgery. So not only morbid or uh, less than morbid obesity, but degree of uh, beta cells function. Uh, so the uh, less uh, function of beta cells, the more uh, aggressive uh, probably metabolic surgery we should uh, try. And uh, uh, 
the less than morbidly patients uh, in more degree have uh, impaired function of uh, better cells. So uh, the, there is more uh, probable candidates for more aggressive bariatric surgery. I like study for, for treatment uh, um, patients with severe diabetes. With, uh, um, but in, in initial states of diabetes, every bariatric surgery will be effective in morbidly obese. But uh, if diabetes is uh, severe uh, and uh, clinically um, uh, clinically severe diabetes I, I prefer uh, more aggressive uh, like side operation independently of uh, initial weight but, but this is about, side, it's a strong weapon yeah? you know, side, side, I, I prefer side is over switch because uh, because side is uh, more mild operation and with less side effects over switch so in general, I think it's not difficult to uh, encourage surgeons to operate more. But uh, you know, the, 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 for in, the example that you gave, a patient with a BMI of 29 was just two months diabetic. I think we do have to remember that, like you, that it is surgery and it's it's a very high safety profile, but still we do have complications. And I personally don't think that we're at the stage that I would offer it, a, a, you know, a, a relatively a slightly overweight person or overweight person, not even obese, uh, with a new onset diabetes who just started the glucophage. I don't think I'd run and take him for surgery. I think we're not there yet. Yeah, maybe you will not offer him, but if he is well educated and you have done a lot of research and you're asking you for, you, um, you would re reject him or maybe. Uh, you know, it's it, it's a difficult question. I, I think I would hesitate, uh, in, in you know, in these very mild, uh, uh, very mild cases of of, of diabetes and uh, and not even obese. Um, I'm not sure I would offer him. So I would operate. Uh, Laurent is working not only just in France. He's now in the, in the yeah in the Middle East, working about many many diabetic patients, and we're operating maybe with only one procedure. Huh? Well, first of all, um, thank you very much for the invitation from the Israeli uh, society and particularly to Nasser. I think uh, to you, these questions, uh, what you raise, you, you have to realize then, not very, it's not very common that the patient come to see you directly to see a surgeon for uh, uh, curing my diabetes. They should be referred, often they are referred from the diabetic clinic. Uh, in Dubai, we have the Imperial uh, London the Diabetic Clinic, which are quite good, and they, they start referring patients from BMI maybe 27 to 35 for diabetic options, diabetic solutions. But it's a little bit of a dream for surgeons to see all these diabetic patients coming to your door and say, I want to have surgery, and I agree. Um, so, and it's important perhaps to also uh, look at what country you live and which, what is the regulations you have in your country. For example, in France, this BMI 27 to 35, you cannot do it. We can do it, but some country they can't. I don't know what they do in the US or in Israel. So uh, if I come to your questions, is a patient come educated, uh, two months diabetic uh, on glucophage, you have to be a little bit reluctant perhaps to offer surgery immediately. What type of surgery for me is what is quite clear in my practice is a mini gastric bypass. And there's no other, other operation. If they want anything else, they just go to see somebody else. Okay. So, uh, uh, maybe sorry, uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I have a very recent experience with successful, uh, successful study uh, in patients with uh, normal, uh, normal weight with uh, diabetes, but we selected these patients depending on the uh, C-peptide level initially. So if C-peptide level is okay, so uh, operation can be indicated, but uh, you are right, uh, the regulations are different in countries. Uh, between, between the procedures, will we start soon now with the IFSO uh, session? The different procedures, just uh, maybe the last or some question from the audience? So, uh, maybe, yeah, Moshe. The question comes to you. Uh, maybe Moshe, you can, can come to the micro. Maybe 
You understand the question? It's good. Gastric emptying was uh, slowed, so the sugar load stayed in the stomach, and that sugar load that went into the intestine for absorption went through the intestine faster, and it ended up being recovered in the stool. So it caused malabsorption of the sugar that was uh, taken in with the oral uh, glucose tolerance test. Okay, you are satisfied? Okay, and maybe just a short last uh, topic or question, maybe to all of us here, uh, what I saw in Germany, in the last years, I remember that the type 1 diabetes was never obese in the 20 years before. But in the, in the last time, we see more and more patients with so-called mixed diabetes. It's type 1, and they became also obese. Uh, somebody rejecting the patient because type 1, you say maybe it makes no sense, or you're operating this patient. Does somebody have experience with... Uh, if you have a, a type 1 diabetes, yeah, type 1. As I remember, 30 years, 40 years ago, we are all, all the time slim. And now we, we see more and more type 1 becoming obese. Uh, you are performing the surgery or you are rejecting the patient. They say, no, you have a type 1, you are not a candidate for surgery. And for me, it's clear to have the surgery. But somebody, maybe Israel, you, have, you haven't seen any type 1? I, I just would like to uh, just maybe give you my comment. I have, uh, it's quite, some, some patients sometimes they came with a type 1, type 2 kind of a, it's some kind of a vague kind of, it's something new a little bit for me. And uh, I have operated uh, two patients like this. And perhaps it's clear when you look at the literature, then you probably help them to reduce the amount of insulin, but you cannot, I don't think you need to have a clear understanding with your patient, then you cannot tell them you can promise them to have this diabetes cure. I think the literature said, and perhaps you can help and reduce the amount of medication, but uh, I will not, I'm like you, I will operate. Yeah. What, what we have experienced, we have only 12 cases, but you know, you have a reduction of the insulin dosage, not just per body weight also uh, ready to a lean body weight because you have a lower insulin resistance and therefore you need less insulin and we have all the benefits from, from the surgery. Okay, if you are, so we are in, in, in time, so three minutes too late uh, to start for the IFSO session. Uh, Amino Ramos, uh, he is the current president of IFSO, uh, will chair this session. Now he is uh, working with his mobile. Uh, Amino, Amino Ramos, you are leading now the next session. Okay, thank you very much.